Hey, good morning. This is Dan with Puts Ponds and Gardens. We're down here in Gross Point, Michigan, and we're on a very historic home. So this one dates back to 1924. See some of the pictures right here, uh, what the house looked like back in the day. Um, and I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what the house looks like now. And then we'll go out into the backyard and we'll show you uh, what we're going to do. So without further ado, let's check this out. Okay, so looking from across the street, this house right in through here. Now these trees are very mature, um, little leaf lindens, and they're starting to drop some of their seed pods right now. Um, we're gonna go back over across the street and we're gonna show you just how gorgeous this house is. So we're gonna be bringing our machinery in through here. This, all, this whole landscape is all elevated from the street. So we're going to come in up the driveway. What we've got is a little patio area that's going to be replaced um, this summer. So there's a nice sitting room here with all the glazing on the outside. They can sit there. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a 13 by 15 pond right here. So 15 foot this way. Skimmer on the far end. 13 feet this way. It's going to be right on the borderline of this very mature beach a biological filter here twist and turn our stream to enter into the pond we'll have a narrow part of the pond on the top side of the pond and then it'll widen out going down towards the bottom so let's go see what the crew's doing i'm sure i i heard them pull up here's another view of the back of the house 1924 right so there's even rooms above the uh the garage. Good sized lot for down here in Gross Point. Yeah. Alright, so we're standing here with the homeowner Scott and this is Scott's first pond. So let's get Scott's take on what he's, his expectations are from us and from what he's trying to get out of his first pond. Yeah, so I've been looking forward to this for a long time. For years and years and years my wife and I have talked about having a nice landscape water feature and so I'm, I'm really excited about this I did my research I found you Dan I think this is gonna be a great collaboration you see you kind of have a blank canvas here um, we've torn out a bunch of landscaping have you in first to put in the pond and then we're gonna redo the patio around it so you had mentioned there's there was some large uh, shrubs here. I believe they were used. They were. But they were um, about maybe six feet tall in these spots all in through here. Um, what Scott's wife wanted to do is open this up to create a lot more green space in through here. But as Scott mentioned, he wanted to get the water feature in here first. So once we're done with that water feature, secondly we'll come in, not us, but another company is going to come in and they're going to do a bluestone uh, patio here and they're going to uh, tailor it to it so it uh, works with the pond. So everything looks like it was all pre-planned out, which, you know, it was, like Scott mentioned, he did his homework. Um, we want everything to jive together. Jive, I haven't said that word in like a long time. So it's time to get to work. Enough talking, make some magic.
This is Brian with Puts, Ponds, and Gardens coming at you live from Gross Point, Michigan. So, end of day number one. Uh, we got pond excavated, dirt moved. Um, don't quite have measurements yet, which we actually should do before we leave, get exact measurements. Um, but turn around and show you what we got going. Beautiful. So three feet deep, got a shelf here. Skimmer is gonna be going right over there. And almost fell. Oh man. I uh, got all uh, mostly excavated soil. It's going right there. Streams gonna go there, twist that way towards the buckeye tree. And then Biofalls is going up in there. A lot of dirt. A lot of dirt came out of here. All that soil. All that soil. It's quite a bit. It's nice soil though. Nice sandy mix. Um, it's supposed to rain tonight, so hopefully when we come back tomorrow, uh, we don't have a lot of standing water. That'll make for a messy day. So game plan for tomorrow is to drop the liner, underlayment, and uh, skimmer, biofalls, run the piping, and get everything else ready for our boulder interception, which will be Wednesday morning. And that's all I got for today. Hello, this is Brian, day number two, uh, back in Gross Point. Um, so we got underlayment in the pond right now. Um, we're getting the skimmer together, the biofalls together, Unloading all the materials that we're gonna need for today um, But slight issue that we had um, So there was an irrigation line that ran through the side of uh, the pond um, And one of the ends is unfortunately going right through Where the stream is gonna be um, So if we don't pull it back um, the irrigation company is going to have a slight problem trying to reroute that uh, sprinkler line. So what we got to do is turning around, there's our irrigation line, there's the edge of the pond where it was running along, that ends over there somewhere, it's not a big deal. This one, is stream comes from up there, it's going to come through this way, enter the pond right where that is. So it's going this way. So what we're gonna do is dig down right there, see if we could find it and pull it up from over there instead of trying to figure out and destroy the uh, integrity of this wall here that is uh, sandy, fragile uh, mix there. So that's what we got going. Um, hopefully we can find it. All right, end of day two. Uh, turn you around, show you what, you, what we got. <sighs> Liner in, skimmer is in, attached over there. Stream carved out, nice wide stream. Gonna have a drop going into the pond here. Little two different elevation drops here. One here, one there, that one's slightly lower water is going to naturally want to come to this one first so help it out a little bit come to that one and there's biofalls so don't have the uh, liner for the or underlayment for this today so we'll have to pick that up tomorrow get the liner in start uh, rocking this bad boy in all right so we got our boulder delivery today here in Gross Point Michigan and I'm gonna go back and actually check out the pond I was not able to be here yesterday. Um, I like to give the guys as much freedom, artistic license. I just come up with an idea and then the guys take it from there. Let's go in the backyard. Let's go see what they've created so far. 
There's Scott trying to run away from the camera. Didn't want to ruin your shot. Not at all. So what the guys come up with, so whoa, this is a deep pond. So we got a three foot depth pond here, it looks like. Got a nice shelf here. Got a little shelf here to receive some of the bigger boulders. I think that biofalls needs to be sunk down just a little bit. Yeah, I think we're gonna sink that down to minimize the height of that. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I agree. Like you said, we don't we're not looking for Niagara Falls here. I think we're looking for a nice tranquil meandering stream. Yeah, sound of water. Is it me? Or is this stream to you look like it's tipping towards it, the beech tree? It does tip towards the beech tree. I'm sure your guys will be able to correct that. Yeah, to me it does. I'm gonna let Brian know to check that. What happens is if this tips this way and and, and it also tips back towards the biofalls. What'll happen is they'll get um, collected water up and through here. So any little small particulates that come out of the biological filter up in here will settle right in front of the biological filter. So we could get a muck accumulation in through there. We don't want that. In this backyard, it might not be bad because we've got the beech tree that's providing us a lot of shade. But if we've got a lot of collected nutrients right in there, that's a sediment bowl. What happens is algae will feed off of that we could get string algae all in through this part of the stream here. I don't really think that that's the case on this one because of the beech tree and the shade that it's providing, but we don't wanna give it the option either. We always try to tip our streams, no collecting areas uh, for any water because those do become what we call sediment traps. So I guess in the design that the guys are going for, I'm going to recommend lowering that biofalls down because we want tranquility out here. Twist, turn, what, what the guys have designed is, looks like they're going to have a drop right over here, a drop in the, over here, maybe a, a centering boulder in the, in the middle just to kind of split the two streams. What you have to do to consider that is the size of your pump. So if you've got a 3,000 gallon per hour pump, we want to effectively get 1,500 gallons for every one foot of weir. Weir is the horizontal width. So right up and through here on this, we want to do a minimum because we have two foot of weir. So we want to do a minimum of 1,500 gallons coming out of that um, biological filter. Now the guys will squeeze it. They'll pinch it off a little bit on each side. So we'll have a little bit more flow in the middle. What you have to be careful of is when you split a stream, and if you put a, a anchoring boulder on this side, an anchoring boulder on this side, you're gonna have four feet of waterfalls. It's not gonna be a very effective waterfall if you only have 3,000 gallons coming over it. A split stream with a couple smaller waterfalls looks more natural versus doing trying to get one big sheet effect. I know that the guys aren't trying to do that. I'm just trying to point something out. And then the waterfall will come down here drop down into the pond. Now it won't plunge all the way down to the bottom. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, koi as they get bigger, do not like temperature changes. If we plunge that all the way down to the bottom, come springtime, not so much in the winter, but come springtime, as the air temperature warms up, the water temperature warms up as well. But if you're plunging the water all the way down to the bottom, we know that heat rises. So we'll have cold, cold water at the bottom a deep plunge will take that cold water and bring it up to the surface where the koi are. They don't like a three to five percent degree in temperature change. And come spring, we'll get calls all the time that the homeowner will say, I don't understand. My fish seem fine. They were coming out. They were great. But we're here in Michigan and some days were, are 70 degrees early spring, go down to 35 at night. And the water temperature is about 10 degrees lower than the air temperature you get that deep plunge boom you can kill your fish in a matter of minutes so we try to go around that on a three foot depth pond here we uh, will do a shelf here another reason why we do a shelf here is because uh, doing three foot boulders on a pond like this we want to make sure that we keep everything in proportion by doing a sheer wall of nothing but three foot boulders it doesn't, um, to me, it doesn't look right. So on the opposite end of the pond, 
because this is 13 feet across, 15 feet long, and we've got our skimmer on our long side of the pond. We, we like our skimmer on the end of the pond, opposite the waterfall. We might get um, a pooling area over here of some leaves, so we're going to watch that. We can always drop in the Aquascape Powerhead, showing it right here, and then push that water, the surface water, just to give it a little bit of help to get those leaves into the skimmer. Duke, Duke, what you doing, baby? Hi, how are you? How are you? How are you? Come here, babe. You're just a fun Frenchie, aren't you? I love his brindle coat. Yeah. Duke, what you doing? Duke. The wiggle butt.